Hello, RJB here with just enough time to bring you a very short match between Lucky Back on the name ASDP. Let me, let me, just let me check. ASDASD 890OP against the player T471. And as you might have already noticed in the title, this is a Zerk versus Zerk matchup because someone in the comments requested I do a mirror matchup. So that's exactly what we're going to do. A mirror matchup. Zerk versus Zerk. It is very rare to see this matchup on the fastest map. And in fact, I could only find a single Zerk versus Zerk mirror matchup in Lucky Bag's out of save files. Now, I must admit, I have not yet looked at the other people their auto save files. I do know there is a huge set between Ombrica's House and Levi's style, but I've already casted that one, so that one doesn't count. And the other one I can remember is a very old one between Mong and... I think it was Hamburg Asasu. And then there is another one between Boss and Voss, in which case Boss is Li Bogu. Which I also already casted, so I pretty much have already cast all the Zerg vs Zergs I do own. But I'm sure there are still a couple of them hidden somewhere in between the outer saves or the matches that I have. Um, stored in my database. But that aside though, Zerk vs Zerk on fastest map is usually all about whoever gets a very small lead by just having the better build order. Very rarely does it come down to superior macro or micro. Most of the time it comes down to whoever did the better build order. And that is most of the times kind of gambling, but there are, there are times where a player just pulls it off and thus win based on macro or micro. But it's rare. But that's at least my opinion. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it isn't always about the build order. But uh, this time around though, we can't really say that it's about the build order because as we can see right now, right here, both players are doing the exact same thing in conjunction with each other. Two hatcheries into a pool. Two hatcheries into a pool. Also do note, I don't know who T471 is. I don't know. I'm just going to call him T471 or T. I'm gonna call him T, although that might be a bit confusing given that he's Zerk to call him T. So both players getting a third hatchery pretty much both at the same time. The timing of the Sunken is a little bit earlier for Lucky Bag than it is for T471, who is instead going for yet another hatchery. So that is that might actually already be a small advantage that T471 is building himself because he will have a quicker fifth hatchery in his base than Lucky Back does, but Lucky Back will have a little bit more defense. He's getting his fifth half hatchery up and running while well, it's morphing right now. So that is a very, very small, tiny difference we're looking at right now. He's also getting two extractors there at the same time. Whereas it looks like T471 invested into some Zerklings to scout the map, but he's gonna regret that one because now he sees that the Overlords are matching and meeting each other here on the top side. Which can only mean a single thing. Lucky Back is on spot number 9, right here. And we have T471 here on the top left corner, well right corner, on spot number 1. He's going for 3 extractors there at the same time after adding yet another hatchery right there. So that is a total of 5 extra hatcheries, total for 6 if we include the main one. And the same actually here on the other side for Lucky Bag. The Zergling finds it and it is actually in the range to kill that hatchery or at least damage it there on the top side. But I'm sure Lucky Bag already queued up some Zerglings of his own to match it. Gonna remove the FBS there on the top corner so we have a better look at the... What's it called again? Production tab? Production tab. It is the production tab. That's what we call it. So Lair is on the way for Lucky Bag. I turned my microphone off by accident. Um, we have Lair on the way for Lucky Bag. He's losing that hatchet on the top side though, but staying alive. Although he is going to try to kill those two Zerks there with his own Zerklings. Zerklings there both are pretty low HP. This one is a lower HP there though. He's trying to bait it into the Sunken, but it's not really working out. Getting two more hatchers there, he's just simply ignoring those two Zerglings there and just letting them do their thing. They will die sooner or later anyway. He's got Zergling speed there on the way as well, whereas his opponent T471 still is not on the lair. 
He is slightly ahead though in drone count. 38 drones, that's not a little bit, that is a huge lead. Both overlords here are scouting and finding him. He's mining from three extracts there on the side. He's got Hylas Den, two Hylas Dens there on the way, and an Evil Chamber as well. Two Evil Chambers, in fact. Whereas if we are to look at Lucky Back, he's going for a Spire instead. So it's going to be uh, Mutalis against Hydalisks. Zerkmas here are on the chase though, going cross map. He's looking for something. He's adding on more drones now as well. Both play. Lucky Back now actually does have a, a drone lead over T471. But it's not going to be too big. Sunkens are being added here in between the hatches. It's a pretty nice little space where you can build Sunkens. It's very useful and this functions as a wall. This is basically the go-to build order for 2v2 and 3v3 public Zerg players who play fastest. They always go for this configuration. Whereas, as you can see here, looking back, trying to go for the same configuration, but he pretty much gave up on it. He could be building his Sunkens right here in his nice little pocket. You can fit eight in there. Two here, five there. So he's also mining from, well, he's still mining from only two, but he's adding on four more extractors for more gas, because he needs a lot of gas to facilitate and finance those mules. 39 drones against 42, he's got a small supply lead, but he is now getting chased down by Zerklings, which are going cross map, and you can see them coming in with those overlords, and they are meeting here in the front against those two Sunkens. He's gonna have to try to find a way around, buy some time, try to get on top of those sunkens. Maybe he's gonna, maybe he will be able to get a hatch here. Although it is within range of that sunken, he's gonna try to get in there nonetheless because he has to kill that spire. But he very wisely protects his spire there with the zergs, and then the mules spawn just in time. But we've got more highlights here on the way. They're gonna kill some of those overlords here, but the mules here are clearing out those overlords from T four seven one as well. So the game is going pretty well for both players. Nothing big has happened yet. So looking back has a supply lead. He's 29 supply ahead of his opponent. But his opponent is well, he's got he's, he's mostly has an overlord limitation. Finds Hylas there on the top corner because they were chasing the overlords, gonna kill those Hylas there with the Mulist and the Zerklings. But at the same time, a counterattack is coming in here from T471, who's aiming to strike back as Lucky Back tries to strike at him. But instead, he decides to turn around because the Mulders here are hunting for something to kill, but he doesn't really get any results there because those Hylas there came in just in time from T471 and they repel the attack. Do note that he has level 1 armor, carapace, and level 1 needle attack on the way for his Hylas, and that will buff his damage up quite a bit. We don't have any upgrades on the way here for Lucky Back because he's still mostly investing into getting richer, while also picking up Overlords hanging on the sides, which is really slowing T471 down significantly. He's now also adding on more hatcheries of his own. He has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 hatcheries there in total, whereas we got 5 here, 6, 7, 8 in total for Lucky Back. A Lucky Back now also adding on Evo Chambers, added on a second Spire so we can get both upgrades there at the same time. But his upgrades will finish a little bit later than T471's upgrades will finish. So T471 theoretically has a small advantage, but the fact that he has high discs, not real discs, means that Lucky Back has more mobility in terms of where he can go, what he can attack, and in target selection. He can go in, he can go out, he can weave in and out on every single side and look for targets and weaknesses in T471 setup and slowly build himself an advantage. He has a huge supply lead here, 40 supply ahead over T471, and he also has more drones, 22 more drones over T471. So T471 is getting out macro here immensely. And those Mulders here on the top corner are doing quite some work, killing a lot of Hylas there, but eventually forced to retreat and heal back up on the side before you can go back in. T471 is regretting going for the inferior build order here, and we can really see build order selection here being the deciding factor. He is, does have a Hive now on the way, but Lucky Back himself also has that Hive already finished, and he can switch over into Guardians if he decides to, but I think he's going to stick with Mule Discs. I think he's gonna stick with discs. Queen there though, with the ensnare upgrade, might spell some trouble for Lucky Back if those discs there do get mass ensnared and those Hylas do get uh, below the discs to kill them. Also interesting fact is Lucky Back has overlords everywhere on the map, giving him 
all the vision he needs. He doesn't need a lot of vision though, but he it's better to always just get it and get vision of every single spot on the map that you can just in case. Because this allows him to deny T471 from spreading overlords all over the map, deny him vision, kill his overlords. So now he's forced to keep his overlords inside of his base, which means he has no information as to what Lucky Back is up to. New uh, air upgrades there, almost finished up. He's got ground upgrades there on the way as well, and a lot of Zerglings being queued up. He has both Zergling upgrades almost finished. He's got Zergling attack speed there on the way. Moon speed he already had finished priorly. And he's got Lurker aspect there being researched as well, so he can switch over into Lurkers if he needs to. But T471 is now reaching the point where he's pretty, pretty rich. He only does have 53 drones, a couple of drones there on the gas, so he's not very rich, but he's getting closer to having a full base with full production ability, but the limiting factor there might be his local drone count. Looking back goes in from two sides, frontal side there with the Zerglings, he's got Nulis there on top of the Hylodus, but there's a Hylodus, Nulis are getting slowed down, but the Zerglings coming in from the front are tearing through those Hylodus there with the support of those Nulis there on top, and this is a very very bloody fight that looks to be going in favor of Lucky Back, but it might just turn around any time now, although I don't think it will happen, because those Hylodus there are getting torn to pieces by the Zerglings and the Nulis, and Lucky Back there has the superior tactic, the superior macro, the superior choice of the unit, and he simply is tearing through his opponent, and the opponent knows he's lost the game, and only with a single huge mass attack, Lucky Back comes out of top, wins the game, and T471 is forced to surrender. Wasn't a lot of action, mostly just waiting for the ticking time bomb of the superior bolt order to finish, and Lucky Back went in right at the, not at the right time really, because a lot of things were about to be finishing up here for T471, and I do think that if T471 hit a higher drone count very soon, and if Lucky Back waited a little bit longer, T471 would have been able to match Lucky Back's mass, but Lucky Back's choice of circlings with wheel discs wound up getting him the win. I'm gonna look for another Zerg vs Zerg because this was quite enjoyable to cast. This is gonna be a Zerg vs Zerg video, I guess. I'm going to do one more video, I'm going to look for it right now, and I hope to find one that is worthy of being casted. Alright, I managed to find one more Zerk versus Zerk. This time it's between Hamburg Assassin and Light. Now honestly, there are almost no Zerk versus Zerks. I did find another one, but it was a really, really long replay, and I don't have the time to cast a really, really long replay. So, this is going to be a short one, I'm going to keep it with two replays today, both short ones. And yeah, I really wish I had more Zerg vs Zerg, I really wish it was more popular amongst the Koreans, but they seriously almost don't play it. As I've already said in the previous replay, there's pretty much nothing at all. In some players there are other saves, I couldn't even find a single Zerg vs Zerg means that they haven't played it in over a year or something. It just almost does not exist. But this time around though we have the light against Hamburg Asasu, which should be pretty interesting. I don't think I've cast this replay before. It should be some prime material. I do believe light is the better Zerg player compared to Hamburg Asasu, at least on the regular maps. And I do think that Zerg vs Zerg on fastest map is somewhat similar to the regular map Zerg vs Zerg. At least, that is of course, if you have the micro skills to pull off immaculate unit control. If you can't control your units perfectly, the story is of course a tad different. So both players mirroring each other, not exactly. This light is going for two hatcheries here, this is a hatcher here on the bottom. This Hamburg Assassin is going, in fact, for a very early pull followed up by a hatchery, so that is a small difference here between both players. Pool coming in for a light there as well. Not sure what this will mean, exact, uh, except that Harbor Cassandra will be able to make his Zerglings quicker, but by about the time he arrives here in Light's base, Light might have his own Zerglings as well. He is going to scout Harbor Cassandra's base here though with that Overlord, and that might change the game entirely. Both players have a Sunken there on the way. This is very different from last game, in terms of build order. Last game we had a lot of hatchers coming down before a single pool or before a single sunken. Both players here are aware that 
stuff might be happening that they don't want to be happening in and that's well mostly aggression from the opponent that they didn't prepare for so they have those hatcheries there just to be sure to Zerkings there coming out from Humber Kasazu because he has to find his opponent quick and Overwatch are simply too far away and he has to get in there soon quick and find out what Light is doing. Light knows exactly what Humber Kasazu is up to so Light has the advantage at the moment in that regard but he will find Light here. No he is flying right past he's going the wrong direction he's under the assumption that Light is on the top right corner because he's assuming that this is the Overlord that was sent here because this is the first over um, uh, light hat that went the other way and I think Hamburg's house was assuming that this was light's first overlord and it traveled all the way from here all the way to there but that didn't happen it's right here right next to him so more hatcheries coming out here for light he's on five extra hatcheries now three are still being morphed in this Hamburg's house is on two and two for a total of four extra macro hatcheries so you'll be behind a little bit in that regard he is, well, they both have the same worker counts, really. To ha uh, hatcher number 6 coming in there on the top, he finished both his extractors. Light, likewise, also finishing both extractors. And 6 drones now being put on the gas. He can afford yet another hatchery, so I'm sure another hatchery here is on the way for Light. Harbuck's house can, of course, afford another one as well. So he's throwing down his 7th hatchery? No, he's not. This one looked like it was going to be a hatchery, but... He completely fooled me. This one? No, it's an Evo Chamber and a... Oh wait, no, it's a double den. Double den for Hamburg Sasu and a double, well, a single den. And an Evo Chamber coming in for Light. Of course, both players are aware because they have their overlords hanging in their opponent's base. What's it going to be? What is it going to be? Light is playing on a very low APM. That's something he's very good at. He knows how to play low APM and still be maximally effective. Because Hamburg's house are pretty much always on high APM. So the both players are, well... Light is getting level 1 upgrade for attack and speed. <laughs> Sorry, get the hiccups. Hamburg's house is going for speed and range. Now, range is going to finish way before level 1 attack finishes for Light, so I do think Humbug's house has the upper hand here, but he is behind by 10 drones or so, and will also be behind by 2 hatcheries. And Light actually added on a second den. His range will be a little bit late, so if Humbug's house decides to attack early, as he is appearing to be right here right now, he might get the upper, upper hand over Light, but Light's army size is... Well, actually a little bit smaller because he's waiting for Overlords to finish uh, production, producing. So he can add on more Hydralisks, and he'll be able to add on a lot of Hydralisks with all those hacks which he's got there. But Hamburg Asasu currently has the lead in army size. He does have less supply, um, less drones. He's got about seven or, well, seven less drones at the moment. But the difference in drones means he's got a bigger army, but more Hylodus are spawning out here inside of Light's base. Uh, Humber is going in for the attack, but he's fighting against the Sunken there as well, but he will kill the Sunken and he will kill the Hylodus there as well, but more Hylodus are spawning from the back line there for Light as they're coming in, but they're going down as well because the range upgrade for Light is just now about finishing. It finished a little bit later than Humber Kassazo's range upgrade finished, and that difference there won the fight for Humber Kassazo, even though he also had more Hylodisks. And the superior highlight discount, of course, also adds to the mix. Yeah, this looks to be a win for Hamburg Asasu. That attack one for light is never going to finish in time. And the, uh, the, the, the choice to decide to go for the level one attack before the level for the range upgrade really made the difference here. As Hamburg Asasu had his range and speed both finished before light. Light is balling up Hydras there in the back, but it will not be enough. Because look at all these Hydras coming in there for Humber Kassas. He's in 70 supply now against 51. And in Zerg versus Zerg, supply is a huge indicator of who is winning. And Humber Kassas knows he won the game here. And Light knows he's probably lost here as well. He's trying to valiantly make a change happen, but it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna be the game where Light somehow makes a miraculous comeback. So Humber Kassas is just gonna go in from the side. Light calls GG and Hamburg has to win that game within only 7 minutes on a very first attack attempt. And as I've mentioned before in the previous game, 
Zerg vs. Zerg is very much about who decides to do apparently the superior build order, and much less about micro or macro skill. Hornbuxazo went for range and speed before Light went for range and speed, and so he also decided to fight first. And at fighting first before his opponent was fighting, gave him the opportunity to abuse the range advantage that Light lacked. And that resulted in the win. It's not a very complicated match, not a very technical match, just a very simple mathematical equation of having more range than the opponent. Basically, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 0 is 1. The 2 is greater, the 2 wins. Pretty self explanatory. So, I hope you enjoyed this one. Not very exciting high level stuff, but I guess it was fun to watch Zerk vs Zerk for once. We didn't have the, the ruffle stomping action with massive fights, but at least we had something to look at and be entertained by. So I hope to be seeing you back next time around. This was RJB for RJB TV. Leave a comment, leave a like, uh, subscribe if you want. It's all up to you. You have the power. And please do come back next time when I have a longer video, more replays, more action, and more goodness to bring to you for yet another edition of StarCraft Brute War Fastest Map Remastered. Remastered.